So the parents of Gabby Petito and her killer, Brian Laundry, so his family as well, came face to face for the first time since 2021 in a courtroom this last week. The two sets of parents both appeared in the courtroom in Venice, Florida on Tuesday where Brian's father, Christopher Laundry, was being deposed as part of the civil lawsuit filed against the Laundries and their long-term attorney, Stephen Bertolino. Now, Gabby was murdered, as we know, by her boyfriend or fiancé, whatever they want to call themselves at the time, Brian Laundry during the cross-country road trip that they took together back in August 2021. The 22-year-old disappeared while Brian returned home to his family in Florida without her. And then when her family asked where she was, they refused to give her family any answers about her whereabouts and why he'd come back without her early. The next month, when um, Gabby's body was found on the edge of the Wyoming Grand Teton National Park, it was determined that she'd been strangled. She was found next to a tree, next to a lake. Brian later disappeared after the remains were found and no one seemed to know where he was. While the death was ruled a suicide and he was the main person that they were looking to speak to in regards to her murder. Gabby's parents are now suing the parents of Brian Laundry for intentional infliction of emotional distress, claiming that they were aware of Gabby's murder and failed to tell authorities or Gabby's parents what they knew. Instead, instead the Petitos claimed that the Laundries issued a statement through their lawyer expressing false hope that Gabby would be found when, according to them, they felt that they already knew. So 22-year-old Gabby's parents, Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt, described Christopher Laundry's testimony as gut-wrenching. They said it was extremely hurtful to listen to someone that has no remorse or compassion for somebody else's life, for the, for the girl that they were going to call their daughter-in-law. It, it was just difficult, they said, to be in the room with Joe and Nicole on Zoom asking these questions, knowing how difficult it would be for them to relive it all, the attorney said for the Petito family. Brian Laundrie's mother, Roberta Laundrie, attended the deposition and is set to be questioned this week, less than five months after it was revealed she offered her son a shovel and garbage bags if he needed to dispose of a body. In a letter titled Burn After Reading, he obviously didn't. So this letter reads in part, We will always love each other. If you're in jail, I will bake a cake with a file in it. If you need to dispose of a body, I will show up with a shovel and garbage bags. Like, what sort of mother says this to her son? In May, a judge ruled the letter could be used as evidence in the lawsuit. Whether the letter was written before or after Brian strangled Gabby, it's disputed by the parents. But Roberta Laundry claims in a sworn statement in the Florida case that she gave it to her son before he and Gabby left on the cross-country road trip in early June 2021. Why she would need to write that to him at that point, we have no idea because it's certainly not the sort of thing I write to my daughter before she goes on a trip. And it's just a bit of a coincidence that Gabby goes missing and he's found murdered and then this letter appears. Roberta Laundry, Brian's mother, they were having apparent difficulties in their relationship at the time, three months before Brian killed Gabby, a court uh, file statement said. I was trying to connect with Brian and repair our relationship as he was planning to leave home. He was leaving for a short period of time. He was coming home. Honestly. Um, it said, I hoped this letter would remind him how much I loved him. Well, it certainly reminded him how much of a crazy woman you were, my opinion, allegedly. So the Petito family expressed doubt 
about Roberta Laundrie's claimed timing of this letter, as I have just said also. And the couple were travelling by van across uh, the US in the summer of 2021. They were taking loads of photos for her Instagram. They were visiting Colorado and Utah before heading north. And they documented their trip it quite in detail with Gabby writing journals and talking about her trip online. But the travels were obviously not as happy as they appeared to be in the photos that were posted online. The police in Mohab, Utah, pulled over the van not long before Gabby was murdered, after they'd seen it speeding and hitting a curb to the entrance of the Acres National Park. This was before she went missing, and Gabby told police she and Brian had been fighting. They separated the couple for the night, but didn't pursue any charges or follow up to find out if she was okay. And a month after Gabby's body was found, Brian was found dead also in another creek environmental park in Florida this time. It was later revealed he'd taken his own life, so it's possible he had a guilty conscience. She had been strangled and he was supposed to be with her at the time, came home without her, and it certainly didn't look good for him. Investigators recovered a letter near his remains that confessed to the murder of Gabby. And last year, Gabby's parents were awarded three million in a wrongful death lawsuit against Brian Laundrie's family's estate. When Brian's parents turned up to court last week, they turned up in Brian's Mustang car. The car that he drove Gabby around in, the car that they were so used to seeing turn up at their house to pick Gabby up. And it just looked like a stab in the heart for the family. It was like they were trying to rub their nose in it after getting the three million lawsuit against them. Be interested to know what you think about that, guys. Why do you think they turned up to court in that Mustang? I can't see any other reason why they would, but that's just my personal opinion. What do you think will happen with the court case? Let me know, guys, in the comments section and we'll talk again soon. Bye, guys.